So you want to start a YouTube channel in your mother's shed, but you're afraid that you don't know how to color grade and your show's going to look like trash. But your bigger fear should be that your genre sucks and you have nothing to talk about or add to our world. Nobody cares about your, I play two player board games against myself. Who's going to win this time? Listen, jabron. You're afraid of color grading. You think, oh, I need a color chart. I'm going to hold it up here. Yeah, you could do this and then match it. And then you have Canon colors on a Sony camera. That's not what we do here at the Camera Conspiracies Network. This is beautiful enough, but there's an easier way. Let me show you. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. So we're on the Sony a7S III with the perfect firmware, 211, the old one. Never change, Sony. Zeiss 35 Miltoni 2.8. I have a light, and I have another light. I'll hide it. It sucks now, doesn't it? Tube lights for the win. So I just want to show you how I grade my footage. I never grade. I never artistically add things to the shadow. Actually, I do, don't I? Yeah, we'll see it. But it's so easy. It's never hard. I film in log. This is what it looks like. I'm not bewildered when I get, oh no, what am I going to do? It's a drag and drop and I move on and nothing has to change. It's very easy. So first, let me show you how easy it is to grade all three of my cameras, Canon R8, Blackmagic OG, Sony a7S III pre-firmware. So the only thing I do is use this data color spider checker 24 chart. It was cheap on Amazon. I do not look at the colors over here. I just use this for white balance. I hold this up for the shot. So here's an example, Canon R8 with the 85mm 1.2. I have a bunch of colored things you'll see over there. Adjustment layers with color grades on them for each of my cameras. I simply copy, I paste. And then we're basically done. The only thing I do from here is go to the white balance, click on my gray card, boom. And then I usually add a tiny bit of warmth and one point of magenta love. And there we have that shot. Douche tuber confirmed. I'll explain what's in the nodes later on. You wait, patience. So on the Sony, we're on the 18 mil Batis. I was doing a little slow motion thing. So same thing, hold up the chart. Boom, drag my LUTs, little white belts. I probably should do two or three points of magenta now that I see the green hell that awaits us on Sony Universe, but it is what that is. And once your grade is done and your wig is on, you copy and then paste to the rest of your clips and you're good to go. And then you have some slow motion footage that is so color accurate. You wouldn't even be able to fit one of those pieces of gum in your mouth if you tried. All right, last example, Black Magic OG, Voigtlander 58mm 1.4. Same thing, only there's two different grades I copy. One is the raw footage, and then the next is the actual grade. And then, same thing, white balance, boom. And then I warmth, little magenta, and then we're moving on, we're done. So as you can see, it's not a hard process. Once you do it once, you have it saved, and then it works. Is it the same if I go outside? I still copy this grade. It's just you might have to tweak exposure a little bit, but for in here, it's dialed. Everything is good. I know that I'm filming with zebras at 56% plus three, and then they disappear on my face, and then boom, I'm exposed, and then my grade enhances it perfectly. Anyone who tells you that log is hard to grade and, oh, I never want to use that because I don't want to do a bunch of stuff, you do it once, and then you live free for the rest of your times. All right, let me show you some of the details of my fantastic grade. We're going to grade what I just recorded. Wow, real time. So these are all my LUTs for each camera. There's one with C-Log Canon, regular Canon, Sony. We got Cinetone up here, my phone. Then we just Alt-V, little color, boom applying now let's scroll to a part where i look beautiful oh god oh wow wow okay scratch that idea that's not gonna work so here's with all the nodes turned off all i do 
This is a Sony to Canon Color Science LUT I use with CineMatch. I don't always use CineMatch. Sometimes it's color space transform. In fact, that's why I'm making this video. I got a comment. Casey, seeing as you grade in DaVinci Resolve, do you use color space transform? If not, it'll probably serve you up, save you a bunch of time and get great colors off the bat, and then you can actually color grade for fun instead of manually. So he said stuff. So sometimes it's a simple color space transform. Other times I use CineMatch. Sometimes I use a LUT of some. I've tried everything. Phantom LUT. Someone sent me Phantom LUTs for Sony. They look like trash. Look here. Boom. This is a Phantom LUT. The hell is that? Look at this. Disgusting. So like I use my own stuff. CineMatch all the way. You just convert Sony into Canon R5. Boom. And then you start tweak and exposure and contrast and you're adding your little highlight shadows to the blue hues go screw yourself so here's my cine match LUT boom before that I add my exposure tweaks so huh not looking so great then boom little what's even on here tiny bit of contrast no colors changing little saturation was added most of the tweaks came with these wheels just gain lift gamma playing around till my you know what I go for around this I like to be hovering just above that 768 line I don't care what the rule is that's where I look okay so like see how I'm hovering over my skin and that line's like just a bit above it's maybe even too high I don't even care about your life you, you could technically bring it down a touch a Tony touch so that's that shot, a hopeless YouTuber trying to talk about his two-player board games and how he loses to himself and he's disappointed and angry at the winner and he goes home crying. The next thing I do is add a little film grain. I'm not even sure why I do that. And I do it pretty strong. All I do is tweak the grain strength to 258 and then I saw somebody, what's his name? Hayden, you know the guy. He reviews the cinema camps, I gave him a shout out. He lowers the mid-tones, so it's not all like sparkly grain on the face. I've seen other YouTubers use like so much grain and it's in the skin and they're like glowing like a vampire. You're not Twilight. You didn't get Bella. She fell for the werewolf in your story. Okay, so move on from that. And then the final piece of the puzzle is the grade. The only thing I do on the grade is this little tweaking hell little bit of tiny leave the reds alone a bit i hate you sony so much and then also i thought i added like some blues to the shadows or something but i let's just undo that let's run away from that sony just looks disgusting here's a side by side without that last node and with it i don't even know what i did to it just I feel like it makes better skin tones and slightly less greeny, maybe? Greeny, it's a word. So it's a very easy process. Once you save all your little grades and adjustment layers on your intro file, and then you open that file, whatever camera you're using, boom, you drag and drop and you move on. And then you can get creative with it. On the side, if you want, if you should so choose it, you could do something like this. Like, you don't have to do it. It's just, if you want to add a little extra funk to your meat, you just you bring this into someone's life. It's going to help them. I'm obviously not a color grading pro. Everybody else's channel looks so much better than mine. The things I don't really know is what should the optimal skin tone exposure and saturation be. This is what I never know. Sometimes I'm like... My older videos were very oversaturated and I never really saw it until people would point it out. It's like, it's so saturated. I'm like, yeah, that's why it looks so bad. Like, I don't know. There's no, like those little charts, they do nothing. The vector scope, like I have no idea where the skin tone should lie and there's no rule. Like I've seen movies that are very underexposed, but they look fine. They look great. It's supposed to be a dim scene. So it's like, I don't know, man, that whole, like where I put my skin tones to like 768, that's probably way too high, but it looks fine to me. So I just experiment and learn on my own. On the Canon, I have zebras set to 70% and 
And then as long as they disappear off my face, things are somewhat okay. And once you know that number, you know what to shoot for. Zeiss 50 mil, planar, 1.4 at 2.5. Can't believe I'm trying to sell this lens. It's the best lens ever made. Every time I switch to a Canon, I'm always like, yeah, that's how So, Like no matter what the tweaks I do on Sony, it's just like, still very yellow or green and someone always points it out down there oh so green i almost threw up in my mouth it's not that bad the funny thing is the lighting looks very different i did the other video using the same lenses and i switched over to the sony and people were like you shouldn't have changed the lighting i didn't change anything for some reason the tube light doesn't show up on canon it, like it melts it away somehow one thing I've been getting away from is using any black pro mists or glimmer glass for the longest time. Every time I use one now, I'm like, that just looks worse. It ruins your 3D pop. Look at the pop. No pop. I'll put it on right now. You're going to unpop. Right now it's on my action cam. That, you use it on an action cam. That's what you want it for. It's like this digital disgusting look and then you can take the edge off with a little Glimmer Glass 3. It's a bit strong, it's a bit much, but like when you put it on here, just watch the nightmares. Like you just see it in the shadows, everything gets lifted and it's not the same. You can just add contrast later, I think, and then boom, you're back to where you were but you also have bloomy highlights if your light was louder than 1%. I added an unnecessary light to the left of my head. Purchased at douchetuber.com. Oh, it's complete. Unless you go rule of thirds and then... Some people take their grade way too serious. I watch a lot of YouTube and sometimes I'm just looking at this grade. And I'm like, what is that? Like everything is pink and weird. And I'm like, who did that there's no movie that replicates what you've done to yourself why are you putting in so much effort to tweak things unnaturally like i just like a nice rec 709 with maybe a little fuji hint somehow sometimes you put on the eternal lut uh, you could get some stuff but usually i do that only on like action cams put a little fuji lut because they look so bad you got to do something to help them out so it's not a huge part of my show getting this ultimate look. I wouldn't obsess over it if I were you. If anything, you're making things worse by tweaking too many things. If you start going into color wheels and you're dabbling in that mid-tones in the orange area and pulling the shadows, the only one I like is my black magic. And I've done some things that I've just, I've never changed it. I put some blues in the shadows and little orange in the mids and I was like, that looks amazing. So I'm just keeping it like that forever and we're good to go. So I prefer shooting in S-Log3 on the Sony, C-Log3 on the Canon and RAW on the Black Magic. And then it's just a drag and drop. It's not, I don't want to get it straight out of camera. I could use the Sony standard profile. Let's just do it straight out of camera. What I hate about this is because now I don't know what the perfect zebra temperatures are. I didn't change my zebras. They're all over my face right now. I'm just guessing that this looks okay and it probably doesn't. So like it's a problem, but once you master that, you master the exposure of your standard profile, then you'll live, you'll be okay. It's a little contrasty, but you could tweak some stuff right in the camera. You could do cine tone if you want. We're just in standard and you live with that. All right, last thing, then I'll leave. I just lowered the ISO to 100, raised the light. Zebra's 70%, and they somewhat disappeared on my... My battery died. I forget where I was, but we're at 100 ISO now. 70% Zebra's, they've disappeared on my face. Sony Color Science. Disgusting, isn't it? So... Let me know your tips. What do you use? There's all kinds of programs out there. Film, Convert, or something. Nitrate. There's a bunch of Cinematch. It's people selling their LUTs. A bunch of bullshit LUTs. I just like to drag and drop whatever I've found. That's all you need. So, I'll leave now.
you subscribing for more tips. Huh? Subscribe, man, I'm saying that.